Hello, and welcome back to Minecraft. Today we're going over an imaginative use of minecarts, and how that could affect future ideas for PvP combo locks. Now, if we come down here, this is what would be considered an odd doorway. As you can see, there's no levers, no buttons, nothing connected to it. And yet, it's a combination lock. Um, the combination keys are these three beds right here um, the combination is fully configurable well let's just show you how it works so you jump into a bed you hop out wait a couple seconds jump on the next bed of the combination hop out jump on the next bed hop out and jump in hop out and then the door opens that's it's rather fast I mean you don't have to wait that long between you jump between beds you have to make sure you we wait longer than two seconds I'd say two seconds is about a pretty good idea for the length of that so we close that up and it closes behind us and what we have here is our combination lock bed lock so here's the combination we put in we nice long redstone lines but that's just all for the combination right so right now we had it set at blue red green blue as you saw so let's let's say we want to change it to red, 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 red. Each part of the combination is independent of its peers, so you can have any color color set you want, and it automatically resets if you have a wrong entrance. And let's just turn off this rain because it's making me lag. There we go. And it, it's it's obviously using block update detectors. There's no other way you could really use a bed like this. But let's just show you red. red oh i guess i guess there's a little bit of a glitch if you have two right next to each other uh maybe putting through the output of these block up the detectors through a model stable circuit could fix that but i guess maybe if you have two reds or two of the same color in a row it activates both lines and it's able to pass through before it stops so that, that's a disadvantage i guess i didn't I hadn't actually noticed noted that behavior before but that's a good thing to know and let's jump into what this is doing all right, so we're gonna start with this area right under here. This is the block update detector. I'm gonna just let the camera sit here right now while I explain what it is. On the left, you can see there's a lever. What the lever does is it powers the redstone on the block underneath it, right? And uh, if you notice, there's a torch to the right of that lever. That torch is currently powering the piston above it, which you can see somewhat through the glass. So what's happening is is that the piston doesn't recognize this power, and that's the basis for every single block update detector that's based on pistons is that the piston doesn't realize that hey I've got power so uh, what's happening is is after it re after it receives a block update let me just simulate that here it pushes that down oh, that's actually probably gonna mess up my lock a bit but it pushes down this piston right which completes this circuit down here which powers the repeater right there um, which turns off this torch which tells the piston hey turn yourself off but what it also does is it goes into this reset loop underneath so that, that's about a delay of two seconds in Minecraft terms. Uh, what's that that's needed for is so that when you get out of the bed, it doesn't recognize that as well as a block update just so that the combination lock doesn't get confused. So that pushes up, which then turns off this circuit. But because this piston is extended, that guy can't turn on until he receives a block update. Thus, we've created a block update detector. Um, the reason I'm using this design rather than some other floor-based designs is that it's, um, is that it's one wide. Unfortunately, it's not tileable, but it is a one-wide block update detector, which is very useful for a situation like this. So that way, our circuits do not interfere with each other, and we get mixing block updates. Um, I tried another version using my minecart method, which is working, but it gave out random one-tick pulses at times, which messed up my rail reset system. So I had to scrap that in favor of a more traditional block update detector. So that's the basis of block update detector, and as you can imagine, the signals go down through here to go to the lock mechanism. Um, let's cover this in the selector right here. The selector is a pretty basic thing. Uh, most people probably already know what it is, but in case you didn't, it's, it's fairly simple. You push a button, it changes what that is and turns off all the other options. So it basically acts as a radio button. Only one can be active at a time. Oh, well, obviously there's a little bit of overlap between the between the outputs, but uh, but you see the you see the idea. Um, all these are exactly the same except they're flipped on the opposite side. So I'm just going to do one, and you can ignore anything above the output of the red redstone lamps. That's all to send the signal into these wires and out. So anything above the redstone lamps is not important. All right, so 
right behind these these uh, but these blocks of wool is buttons, which part of these repeaters right here. I'm just gonna stand still because I had some complaints that people said it was hard to watch a video with me moving around so much. So the repeaters then power the torches in front of them, right? Which then turns off these the repeaters that are above the redstone, the three redstone lamps by the well, the lower redstone lamps. So it turns off all those, which in turn turns off the pistons. Uh, but at the same time, that turns back on the pistons uh, by the other redstone line underneath. So the repeater turns on the pistons again, which clears out any existing one, which causes the top pistons to get a block update. However, at the same time, it also saves the block the pistons above. For the one that's actually active, it'll receive a block. Up, it, it'll see so the signal will come up here, and it'll turn on. I believe it power. How it works is it powers through these. It powers this one gets powered up, right? So the one that's down because it, it has to be down if its input causes it to be. Uh, I I fully don't understand it, but it works, I guess. So uh, it's a fairly basic design. I saw it on uh, I believe Minecraft forums. So. I might put a link to this if I can remember who made this, but it, it's a simple selector. There's not real too much to do with it. It's it, it works, and that's pretty much all I needed it to do. I guess I could have used a bigger design, but that's that's all it is. I guess it doesn't need too much explanation. Um, up here is all the outputs from each of the settings. Right, each one's each separate three lines of red, blue, and green are three separate uh, different settings for the combination lock. So uh, they all come out. Right, they all pretty much follow the same basic pattern. Uh, this is the output from the the actual block back, the block update detectors themselves. So as you can see, it just follows a nice long line down. And what it does is this acts as an AND gate, right? As you can see right here, the outputs at the top are inverted. As you can see, we had a uh, we had I can't remember what our, what our set pattern was. It was like red, blue apparently, and we had red. So I guess we had red, blue, red, red right now. And as you can see, the one that's off is actually the one that's selected on the selector. Because of that, we don't actually have to invert it further down the line for our uh, for our AND gate, right? We just have to not, we have to OR it with this, with the, with the inverted of the input. And we have to not that, right? And then we output that to our combination lock. Now, this may look familiar to some of you. This is a modification of Seth Bling's uh, combination lock using minecarts design. This is the whole reason why I said it's an ingenuitive use of minecarts. Just to kind of take away from the fact that it's actually using beds. It's the real ingenuity in this. So, um, his original design, which I'll link in an uh, annotation now, used minecarts and sticky pistons, right, to make it work. So, what mine does differently, however, is that it's using normal pistons, which makes it, number one, cheaper. Um, it's also more reliable because it, it doesn't require any weird factors, the sticky pistons and their powering rails and stuff. This is literally just pushing the minecart. So it's more reliable, it's more consistent, and it's faster, I believe, just by a little bit. Maybe his is, yeah, I think mine's faster by a little bit. Um, so, so what it is, is if this minecart rail receives power from its respective line, right, then it'll move the minecart along the track to the next position. Uh, where it'll power this detector rail, which I haven't hooked those up to anything. I was originally going to use those to hook up to indicator lights to show how close to the code you were. But I decided that would be a little too too complex, and I ignore that for now. So uh, so when you see the input from the lines, this is the yellow line. This is the line number one, right? That's the, actually the farthest one around. But as you can see, the yellow one comes from the first input. The, this one had the big sign one on it. So you got the yellow, the yellow, right? And... Uh, comes down here and it goes into two locations it goes to the underside which then which is to trigger the pistons after a certain delay in a monostable circuit but we could cover that later and it also goes through here it goes to the correct power rail that it needs right so it goes to the right power rail turns it on so if the minecarts at that one it moves forward if not it's going to get pushed off by the pistons so the pistons activate after delay of five ticks right and then it actually it's six ticks excuse me i forgot about that repeater up here um, but it's a monostable circuit, right, that powers the pistons. Because they're not using sticky pistons, we don't need to have it a two-tick monostable circuit. Um, pistons just work fine with the single-tick monostable, which really eases our lives quite a little bit. All right, so when it pushes down, it continues on the reset loop, which isn't too complex. I got a detector here. If we need to, if you ever need to hook that up, you can hook it up to a, a failed note, note sound or something or reset, whatever 
latches you had to, to, to maintain the door state or whatever. But right now, that doesn't do anything. Um, but basically, it continues down the line like that. As you can see, we got the purple, the pink, the, the yellow lines, and the black line. And each one of those is linked up to a different AND gate, right, with the output. Um, I'm going to note right here that this design could be made infinitely small. I'm absolutely positive. But because this was a proof of concept, one of the number one things I've learned with Redstone, it's always oversize your projects. While it may slow things down and it may make it uh, a little bit larger and harder to, to see from a distance, it's nice to be able to be able to work with uh, without any worry of interfering with other circuits. So... I could come over here and I could change the purple line without having to worry about any interference with the with the pink line or the, or the black line or the yellow line. And that's what I like to do about circuits. I like to make sure it's easy to see. Like you can easily see right here that these are all individual lines right here. You can see they go out in four locations and you can see that they're all going in different spots. So it's easy to see from a high eagle eye view what's, what's happening at a glance. So we come down here and as you can see... Um, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's the final detector plate here, which basically is an RS and latch. Pretty basic design. This is actually an old design that I like. I, it's using a basically an older redstone repeater idea type thing. It's just an RS and latch, which outputs out to here to our door, which keeps it open. And, of course, if you didn't notice, we had a pressure plate on the back side, which resets the RS and latch. And I believe the, the reset of the RS and latch also pushes the pushes whatever pistons are it pushes them again using this line here i forgot to cover this um j just in case that you don't have a color set so if i say i have a blue red blue red and i press a green well nothing would actually happen in here so if there was if there was no green then nothing would happen through here i could explain that more in depth but just trust me on that that nothing would happen so what i ended up having to do is i had to build this ugly thing right here this basically ors together the outputs from all three of the different uh bud switches and it puts them in a one nice little line here. And it puts it in such a way that it always pushes out the pistons no matter what. If, if a bud's triggered, it always pushes out the pistons. So that means that if I if I don't have the green but I sleep in the green, it'll reset the cart anyway. So that, that's an important part of this. And that also happens when I push the pressure plate. So if I started a second code after the door opens, it resets it for the next person to come in. Uh, so that's a basic idea. I'll either leave a world download or MC Edit Schematic, one of the two, in the description. But I hope you guys did enjoy. I'm Angry Beast, and I'm signing out. I'll catch you guys in my next video.